My very special guest has a passion for marketing and helping change makers do more good in the world. She's the founder, president, and chief strategist of the full service advertising agency Kid Glove, where she has created a space where both of these passions flourish. She's also the host of the Agency for Change podcast, which offers a forum to amplify the voice of change makers everywhere. She is Lynn Weinman. Welcome to the show, Lynn. Hey, Matt, I love your energy. I'm so glad to be on this show. I'm a big fan. I am a big fan too. And I'm so glad that uh, Joshua Berry introduced us. That was so yes. nice of him to do that. We had a, a quick conversation. I said, man, I got to have you on the show, Lynn, to come talk to us all about your experience. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and you know what? That Josh Berry, he is a good guy. I've known him for a long time. And he just wrote a great book on the value of being naive. So throw that out for our friend, Josh. Yeah, he sure did. And uh, listeners, if you want to go check out that uh, interview with him a couple weeks ago, then it's right there for you. Dare to be Naive is his book, as Lynn mentioned. But Lynn, I'll get you started with this one. I saw that a couple of years ago, you gave a talk. It has a fascinating title that I absolutely love, which is Pioneers, Peacocks, and Purpose. <laughs> so what is it that you discovered when you were researching that talk? Absolutely. Actually, the first thing I want to know, Matt, is you have done a lot of podcasts. I think you're nearing 100 Am I the first person you ever asked a question about peacocks? It has to be the first, the absolute first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Definitely. I love to stand out. I love to stand out. <laughs> so um, that presentation was all about my journey. Um, you know, the, the pioneer part is that my great-great-great-grandfather immigrated from Prussia, and he landed in Wisconsin. He walked from Wisconsin to Nebraska, where I live now, staked the claim, I actually live in the house that he built in Whoa. the 1860s, and my grandkids are the eighth generation of the family that are part of this farm. So he had a purpose. On this farm, we have a flock of peacocks. The peacocks, most people don't know, we know them for the beautiful, long, ornate feathers. The feathers are used to attract a mate and ward off predators. The day that eggs hatch, those males start to drop those feathers. And with a mat, within a matter of days, the feathers come off and they start to grow them again. So it's very purpose oriented. Likewise, when I started my career, Matt, I thought I was going after money, titles, advancement. I wanted to run a company. I was very brash, bold. I worked hard. About 20 years in, I woke up one day and said, this doesn't feel right. It feels hollow. And so I found that what I needed was a purpose in my work. And so the, the talk was about that, but the research I found, and, and you didn't have to dig very deep to find it, but you know, I found studies that said people who have a purpose tend to be happier. Many of us derive our purpose from our work. Um, people now, I think Gen Z is so on top of this and, and really hungry for it. They're choosing their employers based on whether their personal purpose and this employer's purpose align. Consumers are choosing brands to align with that also are doing good in the world. So there's so much great research, and now I'm testing it in the field of life that says understanding your purpose and communicating your purpose and living your purpose is a really good thing. I, I want to come back to your personal experience as well, but before I do, I think that you make a, such a great point about Gen Z being on top of this. And if you go back to the pioneering part of your story and you think, I just immigrated from Prussia and I'm going to walk from Wisconsin to yes, Nebraska. to Nebraska. The, but probably didn't have the language to say, well, this is my purpose. And I really feel like I need to live my purpose and speak truth to power and all these things. That, that wasn't really part of the vernacular, no. even the consideration. They just kind of acted pretty instinctually in that way. So right. have you That's seen that exactly sort of, right. it's kind of an evolution. I think even for you and I coming up, I, we didn't talk about purpose in my experience as much in the early part of our careers, but to your point, we felt it, right? And it's absolutely- Yeah, we felt it. I don't think I started talking about purpose maybe until 10, 12, 13 years ago, right? It's it's only been in this last decade or so that we've had the language to share that. And Matt, I have to be honest, there's a part of me, and this was part of my Ignite talk too, there's a part of me every once in a while that goes, 
wait, is this for real? Is this just rainbows and unicorns? Like, is this going to work? Am I being too soft? That's one that kind of sometimes rolls through my head. Am I being too soft? And then I wake up and go, yeah, this is working. This is important. There's research behind it. You know, keep going. And I think you're just right all over it because it's so true. And I get the same thing. I talk to executives all the time. I talk to leaders at every level. And it, sometimes we've been conditioned almost to make it seem like that's the soft stuff. Yeah. But if it's so soft, how come it's so hard to live your values and so hard to find that purpose and even know what it is, much less make the tough decisions of saying like, I'm in a job and I'm not living my purpose. I actually need to make a change, which is really scary. Right. It's anything right. but soft, right? Oh, it's anything but soft. That's right. It is, I think, very courageous work to really lean into and, and have convictions related to your personal purpose. And if you're a leader or a founder or an owner, you know, your cultural purpose as well. 100%. And you used a term that I absolutely love, which is hollow. Hollow mm -hmm. makes it feel like we're not whole, like there's something missing. And maybe if you can take me back and tell me just a little bit more, like there was a time I know that you had experienced success by yeah. at least external definitions and standards, but you did feel that hollowness. So tell me a little bit more about what was going on for you. But then eventually you came to found Kid Glove, which is amazing. Yeah, right. So Matt, like if if you had looked at my trajectory 15 years ago, and you would have checked off the list, hey, where do you wanna be by this age? And how much money do you wanna make? And what course are you on? You would have given me gold stars at just about every point, right? But I woke up one day and just realized this isn't good. I am unhappy, I'm on a bad path. Like I thought this is what I wanted, but I am experiencing no joy, right? And, and not only am I experiencing no joy, what I am giving to my family and my friends and even the people I work with during the day is I'm sucking their joy away also, right? Like this is not where I want to be 20 years from now. But I also felt a great amount of guilt with that, Matt, because I felt like I had worked so hard my family had sacrificed for me. My husband, who's an amazing human being, had said, hey, you know, you're so passionate about this. Let me take a little bit of a back seat. My kids had sacrificed because of my crazy work hours. And here I am going, I don't even know if I like this anymore, right? Yeah. Um, even, you know, my employer, who was a great company, and my boss was a great mentor. It just wasn't the right fit. So I had an opportunity to step out, to do something different. I thought, oh, this is it. And I learned pretty quickly, this also wasn't it, right? So, you know, it was kind of the school of hard knocks. But when I really realized, you know, I am looking for purpose aligned work and I'm looking for a culture that supports humans and supports doing that kind of work. That is what Kid Glove is all about. A lot of people will ask me, you're an advertising agency. Why do you have this crazy name, Kid Glove? Well, it has to do with the fact that we take great care of people. We take great care of brands. And that is what I want to stand for and want people to know us for. That's so nice. And, and I think that type of guilt that you talked about earlier, I think a lot of people experience that too, maybe not as profoundly as you did, but they think, you know, aren't I supposed to be happy? Like, yeah. like said, I'm making the money, I've, I've got the comfort, I've got the opportunity, but it, something's just not quite clicking. And right. I have this saying, I like to say that we're so comfortable that we're miserable. And Oof. if you yes. went and you talked to a gentleman walking <laughs> from Wisconsin to Nebraska and you said, hey, you know, in the future, we're going to be able to talk into our phone and people will just bring us food. And you're like, well, that sounds a lot better than what I'm dealing with for the next couple <laughs> right? you know, days and weeks. And uh, yeah. everybody must be ecstatic in the future. And you're like, oh, no, not really. Actually, it's the opposite. Everybody it's has the opposite, tremendous right? and anxiety and everything else. And he's like, how is that possible? That sounds amazing what you're describing. So it's, it's this thing that we feel like, aren't I supposed to be happy? And who am I? You know, we'll play small a little bit and say, who am I to, to look for purpose in my work? Is that too much to ask for? Some people I talk to feel that way as well. 
Yeah, yeah. I think too, you know, just related to that, you think about all of the communication tools that we have, all of the connections that we have, but yet there's a loneliness epidemic that's, that's you know, really impacting not just older generations, but younger generations as well. And I think there's, that's fascinating. Hugely, hugely impactful. But I'll, I'll bring us back to Kid Glove because it's, I just absolutely love the the mission, the purpose, the intentionality. And the entire operation, the fact that you made such a, a, a thoughtful shift and now get to build the culture you wanted, but work with the types of brands and have that type of intention. And, and I'll read this description that I found, which was uh, about Kid Glove. We're the people helping the people changing the world, which is yeah. a lovely. And it seems so intentional to me, but, but what does it actually look like in terms of the work that Kid Glove that you do you know, with your clients? How do you help? How, how do you become the people helping the people changing the world? Yeah, actually, you even just gave me chills hearing you read that, Matt. But yet it's like printed in giant letters on both the wall in front of me and the and the window behind me. So, you know, I see it every day. We work primarily, Matt, with nonprofit organizations, social impact movements and purpose driven businesses. So. We very intentionally work to attract the type of clients that that fit into those spaces. And then we've really trained our team to be able to serve clients in those spaces as well. Marketing for a nonprofit or marketing to move behavior change in areas of addiction or health or uh, mental health is different than marketing a restaurant or a retail store or a manufactured product. So, you know, we really work on that. And I think back to the pandemic when the world was crazy and we were all working from home overnight and just trying to figure it out. Like for us and our team, it was so rewarding to know that, hey, the world's gone a little bit crazy here, but every day I get up. I'm helping kids, I'm helping seniors, I'm helping families, you know, I'm, I'm helping um, advance the arts. It makes coming to work that much more rewarding. I think it's one of the new non-negotiables that people have been bringing to work, some more loudly than others, perhaps. And, and every time I go on LinkedIn or something, I talk about Gen Z and I'm like, oh, they're really... You know, Immediately, somebody who's a Gen X or a millennial will say, hey, hey, we want those things, too. You know, we've been through some stuff, man. You know, <laughs> this post pandemic, yeah. I want to do work that's meaningful. I know my time is short. And there's been this collective sort of increase in the level of consciousness around the importance of serving others and and uh, and these types of things. So I think I think you were well out in front of that. And I, I wonder if things are really moving in your direction in a way, because the fact that you're uh, so intentional about who you work with. And that you get to uh, not only help them in their own missions, but sort of you've you've intertwined that with your own. And it's just I can't say enough about how impressed I am and how beautiful it really is to see the exponential, you know, sort of value that you must give one another, you and your clients. Yeah. Thank you for that. We really do love it. And it it just brings a whole new meaning to the work when you know you're helping people. Uh, versus selling a product, which it's really important to sell products and it's really important to sell services. But we have chosen this space because this is the space that we love. So yes, thank you for that. Yeah. And I think that uh, a lot of the most advanced and evolved private businesses that I see are taking cues from the most successful nonprofits, more intentional businesses outside of private enterprise, because not only you know is it... Um, in demand, I would say, from the consumer side, where you start to yeah. see things like sustainability, uh, equity, these types of things really playing out in terms of what businesses need to put out there in order to, to be able to attract the right um, you know, consumers, but also employees. Top talent wants Absolutely. to work for benevolent organizations increasingly, and it's not going to change. Absolutely. You know, I think a good indicator of that Kid Glove is a certified B Corp through a nonprofit called B Labs. And we've just recertified every three years, you have to recertify. But to watch that movement grow from the first time we started our application to when we became certified to now as we have certified, like, you know, there are thousands of organizations across the globe 
And now they're getting together nationally and, and regionally to help share ideas and, and practices. And I think it's a really neat type of a community, but the standards for the B impact and assessment are how well do you take care of the community? How well do you take care of your people? How well do you take care of uh, community people, uh, the planet and sustainability? And then what are your own governance practices? And so when you really think about it, when you as a business take care of all of those things, you can't help but be a stronger business as well. And so I, I think there are a lot of reasons for why that movement is growing. Yeah, there's for listeners that are a little bit less familiar, there's all kinds of, of uh, developments happening, I would say, inside of organizations. Yeah. Some of it is around ESG, which is this uh, around uh, society and governance, environment, society and governments, governance. And then there's uh, movements around conscious capitalism, or now it's more commonly referred to as stakeholder capitalism. And Lynn, to your point about the B Corp, this is an organization that came up to certify and make sure there were frameworks that we could use. And some small companies, but also really big ones like Unilever. Oh, some uh, really big ones. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But only 10 or so in Nebraska and you're one I of them. I know, right? it's crazy, right? What made you yes. first decide like, hey, we're doing this? You know, um, I had I, I had somebody reach out to me about it and say, you should do this. And, and they talked to me about it. And I remember thinking, oh, that's nice. We'll do that someday. But I'm a busy entrepreneur. I have other priorities, right? And then as our circle of influence and our client base started to grow outside of Nebraska into Colorado and Missouri and out to the coasts, as I would speak to our purpose, more and more people were saying, oh, you must be a certified B Corp. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I need to give this another look. So to be completely transparent, Matt, when we first went into it, it was from a standpoint of, okay, I want to do this because I want to be recognized for this work that we're doing, which is not exactly the right reason to do it. But as we went through the rigorous process and the certification and the verification, we became a better company because it pointed out some areas where we could improve. And now we've just recertified at even a higher score and once again, it's not about the score, it's about the things that we did to become better. And part of the reason we can become better is because we're part of the movement. We're part of being able to gather with other like-minded companies and leaders and really share, well, how are you doing this? And how are you doing this? And what metrics are you creating as a company or what KPIs are you creating that you're leaning into beyond sales and profitability that show your success as a conscious company. And I, I like the idea that um, it gave you some sort of a, a credential, which I think is a worthy thing because it allows people very quickly to see and understand what you're all about when it comes yeah. to that. But I'm hearing you also say it gave you access to a community, like you said, of other like-minded people for sharing. So, uh, because a lot of businesses will approach it and say, boy, what, just what I needed, more hoops to jump through. Well, the reality right. is there is a return right. on that investment. It just doesn't look like this traditional financial return as directly as you may be, you know, uh, trained to think about, but it doesn't mean it's not important. So I really love yeah. the fact that that exists and that you did that. Yep. You know, one other thing I'll just say about it, Matt, is that when I was first introduced to it, there's a, a 200 point assessment and you have to get 80 points in order to certify. And when I first heard that, I was like, this is going to be a piece of cake because I've never done, you know, less than 40% on anything in my life. Piece of cake, right? Well, it's not a piece of cake. It's very rigorous. But I think the value of having a 200 point scale is that companies can kind of pick the areas that they're really going to lean into. So it is very rigorous. It's difficult to get certified, but you know, for us, we're an environmentally conscious company, but we're a service company also. So we didn't score a lot of points in the sustainability environmental bucket. 
Um, and we couldn't, there just isn't a way for us to do that. But we gained a lot in the community bucket and the people bucket. So community or businesses can come in and lean into the areas that are most important to them. Oh, you teach me something there. I did not realize that there was that sort of uh, pragmatic approach to saying not everyone can be all things to everybody. We have right. to kind of pick and choose. But if we've got a minimal standard across the board, then then we're going to be OK. I like that yeah. a lot. But, but now I'll, I'll share with this. So, so you now, let's fast forward again. You've got this level of success that you've attained. You mentioned now you're working with clients coast to coast. Um, so from my outside view, from my perspective, you know, it looks like everything's kind of a great fit. You've designed an intentional culture company. You're making such a difference. But I, I just ask you, what's next when you think about where Kid Glove is headed? Oh, well, all right, Matt, I'm going to have to get your advice, right? You and I are going to have to go it. for virtual coffee, but we are working on a Kid Glove book. We're working on a book. We're working on ways to make our our knowledge on branding more accessible. Um, but but we're really excited about that. Being an advertising agency, everything that we've done to this point has been custom work for different organizations. And um, while we're very affordable and being Midwest based makes us very affordable, not everyone can afford to hire an agency to do this work, but yet I know that when a nonprofit or when a purpose-driven business has their brand together, they have their marketing together. I think in your book, Matt, you talk about it as collective influence. When they have that collective influence put together, it really almost frees them, right? Like you bring everyone together, they're on the same page and it's like, all right, let's get in flow state and let's and let's go. So yeah. doing the book, doing the online class, um, we're really excited about that because we want that to make this work more accessible to others. Well, I'm excited to hear that too, because I feel like a book is a major endeavor, but Oof, what it gives yes. you is a chance to really bring a lot of your insights and frameworks and stories and experiences and tips and data and all this stuff all together in one place. So it's a, it's a big to do. But I also love that in my case, too, the book allowed me to create derivatives. So whether it was exercises that go along with the observations yeah. and research or and, you know, I knowing what I know about the work that you do, I think so many people will benefit from, you know, whichever mode they're in. Do they want to consume the book? Do they want to take the course? Do they want to get the, the, the sheets? Yeah. All that good stuff. So I think I love it. I'm so excited for you. Well, thank you for that. And stay tuned because it is it is a lot of work. I've been yeah. threatening to write a book for at least a decade now. And so yeah. it's it's going like chapter yeah. one has been drafted. That's where we're at. So it's not coming out tomorrow, but uh, that's OK. Moving. You need any emotional support. Joshua Barry and I were here for you. It's a, <laughs> okay. it's, as you know, good. we wrote our books at the same time together and we certainly leaned on each other. So. That's yeah, fabulous. Sure. But I'm going to shift gears for us here. I'm going to move us into a fun game I've started to play called Are We Smarter Than AI? It's a trivia game. Oh We're going to see if AI will ask a question. This one is going to be something uh, a little bit ridiculous. I'm going to ask us a trivia question about peacocks. Oh, <laughs> because, because why not? So here oh it is. Uh, peacocks are known for their stunning tail feathers, but did you know they aren't actually born with them? At what age do male peacocks typically develop their elaborate tails? Oh All right. Gosh, I, I was so that. nervous because I am terrible at trivia. Like my husband is so good at Trivial Pursuit and I am the worst. But I, I think I know the answer to this. Oh, one. good. What do you got? Three years. At Let's the see. age of three, they usually develop those full Whoa. feathers. Here's what AI says. That's right. Male peacocks <laughs> don't develop their full elaborate tails around, until around three years old. Impressive considering how much they add to the bird's size and weight. Nice job. It's, there we go. It's I love amazing. It. It's I'm amazing. I'm on my team, Lynn. I'm so glad you're on my team. Well, I tell you what, we'll leave those trivia questions aside. I'm going to ask you the easiest question of all. Where can my listeners go to learn more about you and about Kid Glove? Oh, this is a great question, Matt. Um, we're at kidglove.com, and that is Kid Glove without an E. If you put the E on, you'll end up with a transportation company in Indiana, and they are also lovely people at kidglov.com. Also, I love making new friends on LinkedIn. You can find me at Lynn Weinman um, on LinkedIn. Message me, I'll message you back. Um, but those are two great ways to get started. I love it. Listeners, I'm going to have those links for you in the show notes. You're only one click away from getting over to Kid Glove 
and also to connect with Lynn Wyman on LinkedIn. Lynn, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thanks, Matt. This has been so much fun. And once again, shout out to you for that book. I, I'm really, I got to be honest, I'm halfway through the first chapter kind of talk to me about the same things my therapist tells me to like, you know, take care of yourself as a leader before you lead others. So shout out to you and expand the circle. It's a great book. 